Yeah. 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 So it's uh, eight sixteen, and uh, I'd like to reconvene. I'm sure all of you don't want to be here all night as well. Um, one item before the public hearing, one that we were into, was that we, that we were unable to complete was the uh, unfortunate oversight of the wastewater rate um, hike that was not implemented. So I think we'll continue to that one. Sorry, Mayor Christie, but what about the public hearing regarding the Borway bylaw? Oh, yeah. uh, that shouldn't that motion go through first? I think that our CEO can speak to that better. Okay. So there is actually no requirement for uh, public hearing on the Borway bylaw. Stop council from holding a public hearing on any matter you want to hold a public hearing on. So you certainly are able to. There's no statutory requirement to have. So, sorry for further clarification. If citizens want to speak to it, then when when is the time that they can come to speak to it? So there would be no defined uh, opportunity for public input other than access to the councillors and of course the opportunity to appear before the council meeting to uh, provide their input other than the form, the open form, other than addition, addition, uh, I don't mean to speak over top of you, but there will be an advertisement in the paper about the borrowing bylaw and, and the, just as there is for public hearings, <coughs> there's an advertising detailing that they may have to submit a petition or and then how to do that. And so I, I should actually just amend what I was going to say as well. Uh, September 24th is the proposed date for the second and third reading due to the advertising requirements. They would not have the opportunity to speak at the open forum on this issue that evening because your procedural bylaw restricts people from presenting through that format on matters that are before council that evening. But they could on the, the tarry will speak. And of course, they're certainly welcome to uh, write us anytime as well, mm -hmm. or emails, however they choose. Councillor Hibbs, go ahead. Thank you, Mayor Creasy. Um, so typically I tend to avoid things where it's a little bit unusual. I like to follow common practice, um, but I would like to make a motion that we do have a public hearing um, on the borrowing bylaw only because it is particularly unusual and I think that people will want to have um, a proper opportunity to have a say on that so I would make that motion that we have a, a public hearing. Can I just assume that it will be for the 24th at 530? Yes, thank you. Certainly, I'm not um, opposed to having one, even though they were not required to. Um, I would suggest, though, that this is not that unusual what we're doing, as it has occurred in the past. Um, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not opposed to having one. If there's people that feel strongly enough to come and speak, they can certainly do so. Councillor Jacobson? My only concern would be if by the 24th um, all the commissions have not been removed yet and we're still able to fully discuss everything that's going on so there wouldn't be the opportunity for people at the public hearing to have full knowledge of everything that they're discussing. Councillor Usher. Thanks, Mayor Creasy. I too endorse um, the idea of having a public hearing, but I guess I would like to question you when, what is the precedent of, of City Council doing this sort of um, um, well, it's called an investment, and I have issues with that word investment, but what is the precedent? I don't know. Precedent's legal term. It has been done in the past, is all I'm saying, whether it be with our, the uh, biofire, biofinance land, and it also was done for another business here in town um, uh, with the hotel on the west end. A similar, similar type of uh, arrangement. So I guess all, all I'm saying is that we're not, this is not uh, vastly different or strained too far from what had occurred in the past, but it's still a substantial amount of money and uh, if, if, if we choose to have a uh, uh, public hearing, so we get. 
Councilor Jacobson. Was there a public hearing when Council passed the borrowing bylaw um, to approve the borrowing for the developments happening in the West End? I do not believe there was on either occasion, though. Again, I'm not opposed to public hearing. Um, just went through one. <laughs> but again, I, I, I'm only opposed to it if if the full details of the entire project are not able to be discussed at that time because conditions haven't been approved. That's all. And you feel that could portray a, an improper uh, situation then? Or what? Well, no, I just believe that for people who are going to speak either in favor or against it, they should be able to have, you know, full knowledge of the details that are going to be disclosed if the uh, if the conditions are going to be removed on the project. So you would prefer that we did not then? It genuinely doesn't matter to me. I would prefer if we did. I would, I would prefer that we did not until conditions have been removed on the project. Because if conditions are not removed, all this is moved anyway, right? So, not seeing any other lights, we do have a motion on the floor by Councillor Gibbs uh, for us to consider uh, having a public hearing on September the 24th regarding the uh, proposed LMS related borrowing. Is that fair? Anyone else? All those. Uh, I'll, can I speak? No? Sure, well, you just under the layer. Go ahead, no, no, Councillor Goldson. Thank you, Mayor Creasy. Uh, I, I agree with Jonathan. I mean, if, if we schedule this public hearing and the conditions haven't been removed, are we going to be able to really defend the issue the way we would like to? Or will it just be kind of a lame duck and we sit there and listen to it and listen to the, the people at the public hearing and they won't have all the information? And hence the reason we don't have public hearings, because they, they won't have all the information. So we have a motion to vote. Councilor Jacobson. Sorry, I don't have the schedule in front of you. The 24th, the only opportunity we have in this timeline of events, proposed events, to have a public hearing. Since there's... Um, so if you choose to have a public hearing, then your bylaw does require you to meet all of your same advertising requirements as if it were a statu statutorily required public hearing. So that's why it would be difficult to make the 10th. Um, why I, I think we wouldn't be able to make the 10th and get those two weeks of consecutive advertising out. Um, and if we pushed beyond September into October, I do think you are starting to uh, affect the timelines of the entire project, potentially. So the, the 24th would be the, if you were, were to have a public hearing, the 24th is the, the date to have it. Um, I, I am relatively confident that conditions would be removed by then. However, it's a possibility that they would. Can you have the motion for public hearing subject to condition removal? Can um, at, at the meeting on the 24th, then if you were to defer it, you may have some people show up thinking it's going to be debated, and you would state, uh, unfortunately, the conditions weren't met, so we rescheduled it to such and such date. So you certainly could do that. I think that this council has endeavored to be as open and transparent as we possibly can in this particular case. I'm not sure that a, a public hearing is going to. Uh, Proved to be beneficial to this process, but uh, that's why we vote. Councillor Jacobson? Yeah, I guess I, again, it doesn't really matter to me either way, but 
I would be worried about the precedent we're setting about a public hearing for boring bylaw, especially if that hasn't been passed. I don't, I don't know. And in my mind, uh, this, I won't call it an investment, I'll call it an expenditure. <laughs> this expenditure is in line philosophically with what's happening on the West End. This, it's in line philosophically with, uh, you know, the, the other two projects that the mayor mentioned as well, too. So I don't see any for it myself. Director Thompson. Uh, thank you, Mayor Christie. Uh, tonight we counsel uh, the first reading the, the C6 district um, and land use bylaw amendments and set the public hearing for September 10th at 530. And so I think there would be some lead time there um, for advertising. Uh, should council wish to do a public hearing for this amendment following our same procedures? Usually we could hit the tip. I think you believe that. Correct. I, I believe we could hit the tip. impact the way some people vote. Um, did you have something to add, Councillor Clark? Thank you, Mayor Chris. You, you may get the target of the 10th, but again, will we have the full picture by the 10th? Very valid question. So, we have a uh, We've got a motion on the floor to have a public hearing uh, regarding the LMS borrowing bylaw uh, proposed for September the 10th. Yeah, should council choose to use the 10th, you get meet our, um, our statutory requirements for the 10th. Um, but I, I believe we can still also meet those requirements on if council chose to pick the 24th as a public hearing date. Council Hibbs, it was your uh, motion. Which date would be of preference? I think I would prefer the 24th, given that it sounds like there could be a, a chance that conditions are met by that point in time, whereas for sure the 10th would be probably impossible. So I would leave it as the 24th and, and let council decide on the 24th whether they support that or not. There it is. Everybody clear on what we're voting on? All those in favor? All those opposed? Um, opposed, uh, Ross, Creasy, Connick, Jacobson. Three, three, four. Thank you. So now we'll refer back to the item that we'd started, did not complete, which was the uh, wastewater rates. Where are we at with that one, uh, Seattle Gowdy? So council left off. There was debate uh, as to whether the entire portion, none of the portion, or a percentage of the portion should be recovered through um, from those uh, commercial customers that have been undercharged. I believe that the intent was that any recovered portion would be recovered over a period of months, but that's just I saw. Mm -hmm. um, Very good. Kind of an interesting situation. Thankfully, thankfully, uh, processes are in place, so we don't have to deal with this again because it is a, a, a touchy one. Um, in any business, uh, when you make the mistake, I think it's a little unreasonable after six months to back bill all of it, whether or not there's room for some consideration or otherwise. I don't know, but. Uh, Councilor Ross, go ahead. Thank you, Mayor Tracy. I think, I think we need to try to demonstrate some recovery of a percentage of it. Like 140,000 is like a 1% tax increase. You know, so uh, I think we have to demonstrate some due diligence. I respect there's a clerical error, and I think to completely avoid not not recouping any percentage, I think is somewhat irresponsible. And even if it was 50% and blend it on into the next six months or something. I think people can be reasonable, and that's just my opinion, but I, to completely wave off 140,000, I think is gonna be demonstrated because we're gonna hear, oh, well, we made, 
a mistake with the Kerlerman group that was 375,000. Now we make a mistake of 140, there's a half a million dollars. So I'm just saying what some people are going to you know, come back to us on. So it's, I think we need to recoup at least an amicable percentage of what we discuss. Councillor Connick. Thank you, Mayor Christine. My question is to CEO Gowdy. Are not wastewater rates going to continue to go up for the next number of years? Yes, there is proposed increases in 2019. Um, I believe 2020, they it would be sort of like back to normal operating uh, philosophy. But certainly, we are have been trying to ramp up uh, to smooth out that increase due to the wastewater uh, the visualization of wastewater. And so, therefore, I, I am not in favor of recouping those funds. I mean, these rates are going to continue to go up. Uh, commercial base, especially, is going to feel. You know, we're going to feel it at a residential level, but some of these commercial customers use a great deal of water. Uh, ergo, their rates are going to go up significantly over the next number of years as part of the new uh, pipeline to the south. We made a mistake. It's brutal, but, um, you know, I feel as a as one business owner that all of a sudden say, oh, we made a mistake. And, you know, sometimes if, when I had my shop, I sold something for cheaper than I should have, which I did on occasion. I can't go back to that customer and say, hey, uh, you know what, I just need another $10 from you. Um, I, would, I, would, I would agree with, right, with uh, administration's recommendation that we not uh, try to recoup that. It's, it sucks, but as mentioned here, we do have a bit of a surplus. So we should be able to weather the storm. I don't believe that we have any sort of a motion on the floor at this time, so is that a possibility as well if anybody's so inclined? Councillor Hooker. Thanks, Mayor Creasy. Um, the wording of the motion, I believe, in the here was just to receive this informa as information, but I I guess, right, Council accept this as information. Is that adequate, or do we also say we endorse their recommendation? I think you should also uh, explicitly say you endorse the recommendation. Okay, so, yeah, that's my motion that Council accepts this as information and endorse the recommendation of administration. Thank you. Anybody else have any additional comments? Seeing none, I'll call the vote. All those in favor? Opposed? Thank you, everyone. I'm not getting nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> no, just one, just one third of it, I guess. So, you know, we're doing some good bylaws this evening. We've got the council and legislative item there to be considered for first reading. Bylaw 463, parental leave for elected officials. And who will be taking that particular item? Is that Diane? Go ahead, uh, CEO Gowdy. So, <clears throat> excuse me, recently Council had the opportunity to um, convene the remuneration uh, committee and look at uh, Council wages with, with respect to the removal of the one third exemption from your federal income tax. Uh, and, and it was a great opportunity to also look at the opportunity provided by the MGA amendments uh, to pass a parental leave bylaw for Council. So this would extend the period that a counselor was able to be absent from their duties as a counselor uh, with specified conditions uh, in the case of having a, having a child uh, through national birth or, or adoption. So the committee did uh, endorse that recommendation and um, a bylaw has been drafted for your consideration. Several other communities have done this. I think it's about showing that you're trying to reduce barriers to being involved in the leadership of your community. I'm not sure how often the actual terms of the bylaw would be, would be enacted, but it certainly would smooth the, the path for someone who's considering writing for council. And so the, there was some time limits from the fact that you come in and the fact if, if it was seen to be implemented, correct? It was only after the into the second year of the person's term. 
Six months was it? Six months. Yes, six months yeah. after that, the term begins. Um, and it would then uh, allow the reduced duties for up to six weeks, uh, six weeks of, sorry, uh, six months, sorry, uh, uh, sorry. Six months after you've been on the council for six months, you would have uh, availability of up to 16 consecutive weeks of parental leave by the way. Sorry about that. Did I see a light on here somewhere? Councilor Luther. Um, thank you, Mayor Creasy. So, of course, I endorse this highly. I think this is very progressive. Um, but I don't know if you want me to make the motion first, but I do have comments to make. So what would you like first? What's your pleasure? Um, so my, I have just opposition with 6.4. Yeah, 6.4, that a counselor will be provided one parental leave per, per term on council. If we truly believe in parental leave, I don't think we suddenly should start saying how many children people should have in a, in a term. So I would like that statement removed. Just let it fall as, like, I think that the sentiment was already said that how much will this be utilized, but <clears throat> let's not be seen to start doing some family planning at the same time. Then um, I was curious about 8.3. So if, if it was the mayor, I, I, maybe this isn't the one, but let me just take, keep talking about, if it was a mayor who was going to take the leave, there would be financial implications of this policy would there not if someone had to step in for the mayor um, like I, I know somewhere it says there's no financial implication implications because um, but if if the mayor stepped away would the deputy mayor step up and receive the stipend that the mayor would typically get as written currently, no, they would not. They would be performing their deputy mayor duties only, and then it would shift over to the next councillor in line to perform the deputy mayor duties for that, that term. Um, so the mayor, uh, in that case, would actually be receiving, continue uh, to receive the pay. Okay. Seems fair to me. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Anyone else? I'm sorry to go ahead. Thank you, Mayor Creasy. So I too thank um, Councillor Hookster for bringing up the uh, the family planning, if you want to call it, uh, clause. I have given that some thought as well, and and I wholeheartedly agree that. Um, although the next line allows council as a whole to say, you know, oh no, you're you're good for you know child number two or three or whatever, um, I don't necessarily think that's actually appropriate. Um, I think it would be better just to actually strike that clause um, that limits uh, it to one one use per term. Is there any additional uh, comments, uh, Councillor Glogson? Go ahead. Thank you, Mayor Creasy. Can we add grandparent to that instead of just parent? <laughs> just a thought. Councillor Connick? How is someone going to give council first reading to 463 as amended? Just to be clear, as amended is going to be the removal of 6.4 um, as well as. Oh, that's it. That's it. Everyone's good on that? You're clear what you're voting on? I'll call the question then. All those in favor? Thank you very much. Okay, uh, the next item I believe is franchise fee rates. And our CAO will take this item as well. This evening we've uh, got an item to present to Council that is uh, an opportunity for revenue generation um, using a, a mechanism that is available to you that is certainly being used almost uniformly uh, at a higher rate across the board with your comparable municipalities. However, it is certainly comes from rate payers within the municipality. 
So what we're here to do is to recommend franchise fees for Acro Gas in Portis, Alberta for 2019. These fees are reviewed annually. The last time they were reviewed was uh, 2004, I believe. Yeah, 2004. These fees are charged. Um, the City of Macomb has franchise agreements with Atco Gas and Fortis, uh, Fortis Alberta, respectively, for the uh, natural gas and their power distribution within the city. It allows them uh, the sole, to be the sole distributor within the municipal borders, and it gives them, grants them access to the municipal rights of way uh, for the utilities within the roadway. So, the last time these were, were reviewed, um, was in 2017, they're, they're set annually. At that time, council chose not to uh, not to raise the, the rates, uh, and that was a long-standing tradition that this sort of came and went as a, let's say, a matter of some more of a formality than anything else. Um, and so I, I don't think there's been serious consideration for adjusting these rates for some time. Uh, we took a look at what the city's comparators so those being your adopted compared municipalities are doing in terms of rates on these uh, franchise fees and what that would what that would do for the customer and for the city. Uh, what we what we came to is that the city of Macomb is actually one of the lowest uh, composite rates of those two utilities of any of our comparators. The only lower uh, ones being Fort Saskatchewan, who has I guess uh, zero and zero for their two rates, and they. And then Beaumont, uh, I guess. So Fort Saskatchewan has an industrial and uh, machinery and equipment base, actually, uh, that is larger than our entire tax base. So they, they have a different source of revenue that allows them to do different things. Beaumont is a rapidly growing community, um, sort of a suburb of Edmonton. They, they've experienced substantial growth. And this really lets them do other things in their municipality with their finances than we're doing here. City of and that's what this comes back to for me, uh, is that ultimately these other communities that are making use of this revenue are able to do things that are different and, and better for their residents than the City of Lacombe, or else the City of Lacombe has to rely solely on the tax rate to raise that revenue. So either we're providing less service, or we have a higher tax base, or a higher tax rate, sorry, than these comparable municipalities. In terms of uh, our recommended uh, philosophy, which is to adopt the median of those comparable municipalities, this would result in an average increase in, in households in, in the city of about six seventy-five or seven dollars per month um, between the two bills. Uh, to put this in perspective, if you were to go at the maximum rate, such as uh, our most commonly referred to compare the town of Black Falls. Uh, it would be about a $20 increase per month for residents. My argument or my proposal here is that a $7 per month combined tax bill is not something that is well known as an advantage for the call, nor is it something that's compelling even if, even if it were well known. That's not a reason that a business or a resident is going to live in the city of Lacombe, where the tax rate and the services that are provided by that municipality are absolutely reasons that they will choose to locate within the city of Lacombe. And so while we may have this unknown slight benefit compared to our comparators of $7 a month lower gas and power, again using the Blackfalls example, if we were to be charging at the maximum rate, we would actually have an extra $1.4 million per year of revenue. So that is a significant amount of money that would let us pay for the bolt and the arena and the, I mean, it goes on. It's entire service arms that you're talking about that other municipalities are able to provide that we are not able to provide to our residents. So I'm not proposing that we would go to that maximum rate. I think that is just too much of a jump and not, and not competitive with our other conservative municipalities. I do absolutely think we should be going to the medium rate uh, which again is about that 675 uh, per household per month. Even that will generate an additional nearly half a million dollars for the city of Lacombe. Although unfortunately, we did recently receive a letter from Atco Gas revising their expected revenue for us for 2018 uh, to $80,000 less than they had previously told us in September. Um, 
so that 480,000 that I've proposed actually isn't fully, be fully additional revenue, some would make up this gap. However, we do expect that many of our comparable municipalities, when they receive the same letter, will jump their rate to make sure they're kept whole uh, with their expected revenue. And so we would expect that that median rate in future years would actually will rise. So a proposal, um, a proposal for you this evening for this uh, additional revenue is that <coughs> council set the 2019 natural gas and electrical franchise fees for the city of Lacombe. Uh, actually, I'll give them a second. <coughs> Uh, the natural gas franchise fee at 22.1%, the median rate of the comparator municipalities. And further, the council set the 2019 electrical fan franchise fee for the city of Lacombe at a uh, rate of 12.75%, again, the median rate of comparator municipalities. Just wondering if you could explain to us why would we be experiencing such a difference for the Fortis um, electrical portion and the gas, we're almost at the median now. How, how did that come about? That we're so out to lunch with the, with the uh, electrical portion. Um, I wish that I had an answer for you there. Unfortunately, it, it was 2004 when these were last actually uh, changed. And so the city did sign new agreements in the last five years with both, both of the uh, service providers, but chose not to update at that time. I think just over time, other municipalities have relied further and further on these franchise fees to keep their tax rate stabilized, uh, where the city hasn't. And I think that this, this revenue generation isn't for some nefarious purpose. It's so that you're able to meet your commitments. And so if you want to keep your tax rates low and you want to fill the reserves uh, and, and meet your reserve contribution targets and have economic uh, development, you should be making use of the same tools. My recommendation is you should be making use of the same tools that all the other comparable municipalities are making use of. Councillor Hoopstra. Thanks, Mayor Creasy. I remember seeing this before I was a city councillor and I didn't understand how we would sit beside Black Falls and charge so much less um, when it was a tool that we could use. I, I would recommend our numbers that we remove Fort Saskatchewan zeros and then we use the others to, like I like that idea of the median, I do, but let's remove those arrows from Fort Saskatchewan, if that's possible. Uh, so I should say, actually, in my proposed rates, I removed the zeros of Fort Saskatchewan and the top end of the town of Blackfellas, um, mm -hmm. because I thought if we take out those two outliers, that's a, yeah. In terms of the median, uh, if you gotcha. your stats, it actually doesn't make any difference if you remove the top end and the bottom, the media stays the exact same, but we didn't get to that. Okay, but if you just remove Fort Saskatchewan, it becomes 24 for ATCO, and then 24.64, and then 13.79 for Fortis. In as much as no one likes these, you know, call them what you want, basically it amounts to like a hidden tax almost. The problem comes in when you've got other communities that are charging so substantially more, and also we've got this pool of funds to work with and provide all the all the uh, needs and wants that everyone in all communities does. It just becomes very lopsided. So, I think that uh, to remove Fort Saskatchewan uh, is a a common sense thing to do. They have a completely different revenue stream than what we do, uh, but I would I would like to have the true meeting with the remaining as well. Councillor Jacobson. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm also in favor of this, but I'm, I guess I'm, I i do not know to what degree it needs to be discussed at this point here. Um, but I would like some discussion to happen about what happens with this extra money. Um, specifically, I would like to have a, a debate around is it going to go to um, reinstate the reserve balances that, uh, you know, that we've uh, kind of hashed to get to the next four years here or what I, I would just hate to see us um, approve this and then forget we had it and it just sort of gets lost in the abyss of, of operations. So I'd like to see that debate happen down the road. So our intention was uh, that we would be looking at those reserves. I don't know if I agree with the abyss of uh, <laughs> operations, <laughs> but I understand. The table to talk. Councillor Gullickson. 
Thank you, Mayor Creasy. I, I, I don't disagree with increasing some of these rates, but we just have to remember that there is just one taxpayer and we're taking it from them. And some of the people that pay the highest gas bills are the, the ones that need the most help uh, that you see out there. They're in the low income homes and they're not as insulated as well as Jonathan's new homes are. And they have high gas bills and they uh, uh, are ones paying the, the higher fees. So you're taking this from some low income people too. So it's just, just be a little careful, that's all. Councilor Ross? I'd like to make the motion to follow the recommendations of both the natural gas and electrical franchise fees as stated. Does that make sense without reading it all? I just want to confirm uh, you are saying as stated. Uh, with recommendations as the gas at 22.1 and electrical at 12.7. I just didn't want to. With, the, with the inclusion of the Fort Saskatchewan or the exclusion of Fort Saskatchewan? You already excluded Fort Saskatchewan, you said. I do. Uh, sorry, Black Falls had. Uh, and you Fort excluded Saskatchewan. high and low with these values? Right. I, yes. I, I was hearing uh, from a couple that maybe we should just be looking at excluding Fort Saskatchewan and not excluding the town of Black Falls. I just want to make sure that was clear. I'm taking as the numbers that you excluded the high and low and your median as stated in 22.1 and 12.75. Thank you. Councillor Clemmick. Thank you, Mayor Chrissy. Um, yeah, I support this. It just still kind of bugs me a little bit. Nothing worse than when you shut the gas off in the summer and you get that gas bill and your distribution charge is still there. And uh, guess what? Now that's going up. So I, yeah, I, I get the rationale. I'm not 100% on board. Um, and I don't think I want to, as Councillor Jacobs has suggested, kind of earmark it specifically, increase revenues, increase revenue. Obviously, we're going to try and bring up the reserves, but I don't I hesitate to kind of earmark it specifically. But um, yeah, I guess I can get on board, but it's just, it's, yeah, has been alluded to by a number of years. It's, as you, the mayor himself has said, it's kind of a, another increase we have to bear. So, I'm still not totally clear on the numbers. Black Falls is in or out? High and low is out. Black Falls is out. And that's the way that you want to state? Yes. Okay. Everyone's all good with that? Any no further comment? I will call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Thank you. There was no vote. Yes, we are getting close. Thank you for that reminder. If someone would care to make a motion to extend this view, we've got a couple others that we need to go through. Councilor Ross has got his light on. Oh, no. sorry, absolutely. Make a motion that we uh, uh, proceed after 9 p.m. I forget the bylaw, but our procedural bylaw. Thank you for that. All those in favor? Closed. I don't always And under new business, I would ask the director Thompson to take us through the planning and development services item request for decision on market value plan sale. Thank you, Mayor Creasy. Uh, the purpose of this item is to determine council support for the sale of a portion of public road allowance at the southeast corner of 45th Street and 50th Avenue. Uh, the land would be consolidated with the adjacent parcel at the time of its redevelopment. Um, there's a developer who is presently working on the redevelopment of that site into a commercial use and additional land would allow for um, additional parking and vehicle circulation on that site. Uh, administration has reviewed the, uh, uh, this portion of land it is within the Highway 12 or the 50th Avenue road allowance um, and essentially we don't have a need, need for it. Uh, 
present. There's also a Atco pipeline transmission main that uh, goes al along the south boundary of 50th Avenue through this proposed area. And um, initial discussions with Atco pipeline indicate that they oppose the construction of a parking lot over their infrastructure. However, administration and the developer are working to determine if there are any other alternative solutions that would allow parking, uh, the parking lot that are satisfactory to the developer and ATCO pipeline. The sales agreement, um, if uh, endorsed, if the sale were to be endorsed by council, it would be a market value sale with the, with the condition that the developer and ATCO pipeline come to an agreement with regard to the parking lot development. Thank you for that. Um, so this is in keeping with uh, Council's wishes to address uh, underperforming and dormant assets, which I like to understand that our um, development, uh, economic development officer, manager rather, has uh, put a lot of effort into uh, bringing this forward. I want to make mention of that as well, so we'd like to start this item. Councillor Hibbs. Thank you, Mayor Creasy. Just to get the ball rolling, I would actually move that Council allow the applicant to provide, sorry, to proceed with the road closure and purchase of the road at fair market value. I think this exactly meets our objectives and I think it's a great idea. Thank you for that. Anybody else care to speak to that motion? Oh, might be done on time anyway. All those in favor? And just some clear opposed? I wasn't sure. Okay, so unanimous, thank you. Appreciate that. All right, item to move forward with. And do we have any other items besides reports? Kind of jumped around a bit here, I'm not missing any. We're good? Councillor Hibbs, go ahead. Um, thank you, Mayor Greasy. So just for clarification, when we did the parental leave um, bylaw, did we do two readings? I just, I, it was originally meant to be two, and I just realized that we just sort of skipped along. I think it's, we, you're, you're perfectly right, we only did one. Whether we do one and two tonight or two and three next time is kind of irrelevant, but if you, yeah. you got the floor, if you care to move it. Um, to be honest with you, for the sake of time, I'm, I'm good with just leaving it. I just want to double check things. So it's been quite some time since our last uh, meeting and reporting time. So I don't think I'm going to go through um, all of the items there. Certainly it was through parade season and whatnot. I guess the one, just out of respect for the uh, Ladies' Legion Auxiliary, um, that's the one day of the one event of the year where those ladies who do an awful lot of work uh, are recognized for the, uh, the the work that they do do the, the remainder of the year and are and are waited on, which is really nice to see, uh, considering all they do for our veterans and veterans' families. So I I would uh, make mention of that. Um, move that one forward a little bit. Uh, those other items you can move forward. The International Learning Program at the Wolf Group Public Schools, and they call lots of press, so I'm not going to go through it as well. And the Lacombe Days items, uh, some of, just a few of the ones that I was able to attend. And uh, the most important part of that, I did want to uh, remind myself to publicly thank uh, Councillor Ross for, and certainly his dedicated uh, team of volunteers as well, for all the work that they do to make uh, a truly enjoyable uh, event for the entire community. Um, I heard uh, no end of positive comments on a number of events, and I think that the um, turnout for most every event was substantially higher. Uh, so I think that all points to uh, a job well done, and we certainly do appreciate it. So thank you. Thank you. And I don't know if anybody's heard, but uh, Money Sense Magazine put out a <laughs> I won't get into that. <laughs> well, is there any questions on my report? Councillor Hibbs. 
Thank you, Mayor Creasy. So I, I actually want to talk about the money sense thing. So of course, thank you for doing all those fabulous interviews. I was able to catch a number of them. But I was wondering, like, beyond just interviews, like, did the city also re like receive just more phone calls or inquiries? Like, what was the overall impact of, of that um, ranking beyond just interviews? Um, the individual uh, input, I would say, that we all the way there was a written submission or two. So, uh, one fellow from Vancouver. We did have people, a couple of uh, citizens here, phone to congratulate uh, um, the city, uh, the mayor council. I, to try and temper that and, and want them to keep in mind that uh, it's a reflection on a number of uh, criteria that go into this and, and not specifically um, taxation, that type of thing, although that is a factor. But uh, yeah, I think it was mostly a one-on-one, -on -one, but uh, it was certainly something that everybody knew about, which was good to see. And I believe that since that time, we have appeared uh, favorably on a couple of lists. Uh, the other one was the OWL has put out a publication put out by the uh, Edward Treasure Branches for real estate investment or the residential. Is real estate in general? Real estate, real estate. Real estate in general investment and I think we ranked um, in, the in the top 10 that quite highly as well. And also uh, some recognition for our uh, campground was rated as number one in uh, the province as well, which is good to see. So thanks for bringing that up. Appreciate it. Who would like to go over there um, first? Let's go with uh, Councillor Gullickson then. Okay, thank you, Mayor Creasy. Uh, I think we'll have to wait and see if Jonathan and Ruben have smiles on their faces, if that has any value, this number one rating for us. Get more people in town and sell more some real estate. Uh, I also was very busy with Lacombe Days, uh, I enjoyed it very much, uh, being the parade marshal was great for me again, telling people where to go, so that was really nice. <laughs> I liked that job a lot, uh, so uh, some people didn't appreciate me, but others did. Uh, I also attended the, uh, the reception for the Linka Gretzky Cup, uh, which was on the same night as our hockey game here in town, which was unfortunate. but. Um, I think that that uh, would have been much better received if we could have had a game on the opposite night as Team Canada. So uh, it was it was it was too bad. Anyway, it, uh, that was interesting. And other than that, a few or two MPC meetings uh, with some interesting things on the agenda. Dog therapy was one of them. I found that very interesting. And uh, certainly attended the asset management uh, training. Uh, with uh, administration, which I found very interesting and, and uh, really informative. And I look forward to future sessions. I think there's a couple more yet. So thank you for letting us sit in on those. And that's about it. Any questions? Councilor Ross? Sorry, I'll just do a verbal. I didn't mean to interrupt because uh, I thought I sent it, but I didn't. So. Would you care to go ahead with that now? Sure. Uh, Basically, look on days. Uh, I think uh, our committee deserves some recognition, not myself as a whole. Uh, and I thank you for that, though. But Rosanna Caracas, uh, Sandra Harder, Don Gullickson, uh, Justin Case, and Grant Turner helped us out a lot over a few days. Uh, I will say a few numbers. Uh, last year, our Jackman movie was 125. This year, is 348. Uh, great success in the fundraiser for Big Brothers Big Sisters. Uh, Bouncy Castles was another fundraiser for another group. Pardon me, I forget. And the drive-in movie probably was the one that was weak. Uh, we are going to do more research and try to bring that back because that light show was probably the only area of weakness of it. We tried something different because uh, prior uh, fireworks was six thousand dollars for ten minutes, so we tried to do a light show each night for 20, 25 minutes. Trying, but that was probably the only negative part. Justifiably, it wasn't a wall factor. Uh, the horse bowl was about 200 people attending. The numbers are up there. Uh, Parent Link FCSS did their lunchbox theater. Uh, previous 2017 was 350 children. This year they had 700. So all in all, it was a beautiful weather, great weekend. Uh, you know, we uh, accept people's constructive criticism, and we hope to keep building it better, bigger, and better. So all in all, it was a good weekend. Thank you. Any questions? If not, uh, Councillor Hofstra. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you, Mary Creasy. It looks brief, but it felt like it was a busy summer already. But um, I attended the pre-budget talks so three times in July, but um, for this report, the 11th and the 25th. People really want to talk to us. They don't want to talk about the budget, but they really want to talk to us. And that, you know, I endorse that. That's pretty. That was very enjoyable for sure. Lacombe Days was an excellent festival. Um, just a tiny change on the attendance numbers. It was not children, but 350 people versus 700 people. Yeah, so uh, crazy turnout for the Lunchbox Theater. So I really enjoyed participating in a variety of events at Lacombe Days. I think the one, the thing that people wanted to talk about most is why I got to drive the float. <laughs> I said rock, paper, scissors, and people are going, are you serious? I said, yes, that's how I got it. But I do have a handwritten comment from a citizen that I would like to read as part of my report. Um, on a different note, she just wrote, yesterday I ran into the Max store to grab a small thing of milk. So I was pulling into the parking lot and I was struck by the beauty of the flower beds that surround that area. I took a second and looked around and enjoyed the amazing garden, gardens in front of the LMC and all the uh, luscious hanging baskets. To all of those who are involved in making our city a beautiful place, from the decision makers to the individuals who plant and water and attend to the plants, thank you. I see the beauty and I really appreciate it. Thank you for that. Any questions? Director Thompson. Thanks. Uh, this is a good opportunity to, uh, to mention the uh, part of the Main Street project. Uh, we are decommissioning the sign, the digital sign down there, and replacing it with some flagpoles. And so there's a beautiful flower bed there. And so we'll see, that won't look great for a little bit. <laughs> and so, um, so once the flight poles are up, we are going to reclaim some of that landscaping and, and, and you know, beautify that again. Okay. So in the interim, that's what's going on. Okay. Right here I was being played in my report, I didn't mention the uh, grand opening of the downtown project, and thought that's what you were going to mention. So. Councilor Jacobson. I didn't have a, I didn't have a lot going on actually. Um, I did attend the uh, farmers market budget consultation with Councillor Connor and Councillor Hibbs. I had many spirited discussions with several residents, mostly about cannabis legalization, as you can imagine. Um, and in fact, the discussion really did highlight to me the balanced approach the city is taking. And um, I was quite pleased with how our proposed legislation at the between meetings now. Um, really allowed me to prepare, provide honest and fair answers to people from both sides of the spectrum. Um, I did attend the Home Days Parade and I discovered an excellent community outreach niche as the man responsible for ensuring all children who did not get candy on the initial pass were taken care of. I think I've secured my election for 20 years to come. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I did have several discussions this weekend um, regarding the proposed borrowing bylaw. Um, Certainly shaking things up, and that's what's been going on for me for the last month. Thank you for that, Councillor Hibbs. Thank you, Mayor Creasy. So, of course, my report is there. Don't really have much to add, except I really did enjoy the um, the pre-budget consultations. I, I will echo the fact that most people didn't really want to talk about budget, although they were more than happy to take the card and take the survey at home, but they really did, um, I think, enjoy the opportunity to talk to us about any number of different items, which hopefully were all recorded um, carefully in the little books. So yeah, that was 15 hours um, of consultation um, between uh, two farmers markets and two community markets. So I really think that we did, for my even for myself, but I know everybody else also had opportunity to do that, and I think I, I just want to say that uh, I was really pleased that council did that um, you know you could argue was it valuable or not but I think it really was valuable and I think it really shows the community that we are listening and that we are wanting to hear what they have to say and we, we want to try and, and you know obviously make make life better in the home that's I think why we all ran so I just wanted to mention that um, one thing I did um, mistakenly miss on my um, report here was that I did actually attend the Halenka game that was was here in town. Um, it's rather unfortunate on a holiday Monday that it was 
rather sparsely attended, although those that were there were quite enthusiastic. So it was pretty cool to have, um, you know, an event like that here. Like, that's an international event. So, um, you know, me being the, the sports mom, I guess, the, the hockey mom, I, I had, to, uh, had to check it out. But it, it was pretty cool. Thank you. Any questions for the report? If not, uh, Councillor Connick. Thank you, Mary Christie. My report is a little bit lengthy because, of course, I'm doing some catch-up because I had some difficulties submitting. But um, I did want to echo the comments on the farmers market. I think, I think the community, the folks at the community, when you guys went to the music in the park, I think you guys probably did better than we did at the farmers market because I think the farmers market people are there on a mission to get their veggies and their fruit, and not really. But those that did chat did not chat about did not chat. Excuse me, did not chat about budget for the new. Uh, it was still worthy. Um, I did want to um, welcome Councillor Hooster's comment and, and the little note she just read. There were some comments made this evening that this community is not beautiful, but I, I tend to disagree. I think it's a terrific place and we do a good job where we can, and um, so I, I welcome those comments. Lastly, uh, just the only item I want to know in the report was the SDBA training. I, I did already. I know a number of the other SDBA members are doing it in September, but I decided to do a little earlier. I did find it interesting, I already talked to uh, Ross, our legislative coordinator, that um, SDB, one of the changes is you can only have one council member. So it's, you know, I think we need to appoint two, an alternate, um, uh, but uh, going forward, there can actually only be one councillor at these meetings. So I don't know if we're gonna, we can address that in the fall, whether or not we have to get another public member or what the case may be, but I'll, I'll consider, I'll still sit in the court wants to be the alternate or whatever, vice versa. And I think, obviously, Councilor Husha should still do the training, but uh, uh, that was interesting. Anyway. And I thank Councilor Connick for those comments because I, I made a note uh, for the fall organizational meeting so that we'll bring forward a recommendation to appoint one Councilor and another alternate as well. Thank you. 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 Uh, so leg legislative wrinkle is all this, but our bylaw does not require changes because it says up to two councillors, so we can still do that. Thanks. Okay, so thanks, council, for your reports, and we've got our monthly significant events report from our chief administrative officer as well. Thanks to you. I won't belabor the report, but I did want to highlight a couple of operational things. Uh, the first, we were, I think I can speak for the organization, we've been uh, really fortunate to have Director Vaughn uh, incorporating her master's thesis work into our organization itself, and we are moving into sort of the final stages of doing that. Uh, it's allowed us to also implement a business planning system that was brought to the city in 2000. 16, but actually was developed uh, custom for the city, uh, but has never actually been implemented into the organization, and, and we've been able to do that thanks to the work of uh, Director Vaughn. So congrats on defending your master's thesis, and thanks for incorporating this. Unless there's questions, of course. Any other questions or comments? No questions or comments. I would just move to accept the reports as information. Thank you very much. All those in favor? Thank you. Appreciate that. And that brings us down to um, number 11 and number 12. I think we have a motion for that. I appreciate it. Councillor Hoopstra. Mayor Creasy, I move that we move in camera. Is that the motion you want? That would be appropriate. Thank you very much. All those in favor? Thank you. So I certainly appreciate uh, members of the gallery and some of the press for being here this evening. Um, there was a little bit of an impromptu break we had before. Was there any items that anybody from the press wanted to go over briefly um, before we went? In camera or no? You're good? The, the cannabis item. That would be one? Yeah. And who did you want to speak to? Uh, Jacobson, please. 
Okay, we will, uh, okay. How about if we allow you uh, four or five minutes? No, two. Work? I said two. Okay. Oh, thank you. Sure. 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 Sure.